Today, we are joined with Sarah's brother, Paul, who is going to share his story with spinal muscular atrophy. Hey, Paul. When Paul was born, he was no different from most other newborn babies. By his first birthday, though, he was having a hard time walking independently and even standing. Paul's parents were deeply concerned and took him to see a medical doctor. While diagnosing the exact issue was challenging, doctors concluded that he had weak muscles and decreased muscle tone, which indicated that he had spinal muscular atrophy, also referred to as SMA. Spinal muscular atrophy, or SMA, is a genetic disorder that compromises a person's physical strength by affecting the body's nervous system. Nerve cells that control muscle movement are primarily located in the spinal cord. When a person is afflicted with SMA, these nerve cells no longer send signals to muscles telling them how to move. Due to the inactivity of these muscles, they begin to atrophy or shrink in size. As I mentioned before, SMA is a genetic disorder. It is caused by a mutation on chromosome 5 in a gene called SMN1. People diagnosed with SMA have difficulty walking or even breathing and swallowing, but it does not affect a person's cognitive ability or their ability to learn and build meaningful relationships. There are five types of SMA. Type 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. The type of SMA an individual is diagnosed with depends on the age symptoms begin and the individual's physical abilities. Type 0 SMA, also referred to as prenatal onset SMA, affects babies that are still in the womb and is the most severe type of SMA. Babies with type 0 may die while still in the womb, but are more likely to die within their first year of life. Symptoms include poor fetal movement, abnormal breathing, joint abnormalities, and difficulty swallowing. Type 1 SMA, also known as infantile onset, or Vertnick-Hoffman disease, is present at birth or by the age of six months. It is the most common form of SMA. Typically, babies with type 1 SMA have weak muscles and have difficulty moving, eating, breathing, and swallowing. Type 2 SMA, or intermediate SMA, has an onset of 7 to 18 months before the child can stand or walk independently. Children with type 2 oftentimes have greater muscle weakness in the arms and legs. Another identifier of type 2 SMA is scoliosis. Paul, for example, is diagnosed with type 2 SMA. Type 3 SMA, also referred to as kugelberg velander disease, has an onset after 18 months. It is milder compared to type 1 and 2 SMA and becomes apparent after the child has learned to walk and stand independently. Symptoms of type 3 SMA include scoliosis, poor balance, a light tremor, and difficulty walking or standing over a period of time. Type 4 SMA, or adult onset SMA, is usually diagnosed when an individual is in their 20s or 30s. Symptoms include muscle weakness in the legs and muscle tremors. Most people with type 4 SMA never end up needing a wheelchair. Hey Paul, welcome back. Let's talk a little bit about his story and how he manages SMA. After Paul's parents noticed that he was not making certain milestones, like walking without assistance, they took him to see a genetics doctor. This was at the recommendation of Paul's primary physician. His parents said the genetics doctor was terrific. He was very knowledgeable and took some blood samples for a genetics test. This test revealed that Paul had type 2 SMA. Genetics testing is probably the best way to accurately diagnose SMA, but other tests can also aid the diagnosis process, such as an electromyography or a muscle biopsy. Regardless of the type of SMA a person might have, the same diagnosis process is used, even if the symptoms vary in severity. As of today, there is no cure for SMA. However, there are different ways to manage it. Physiotherapy and occupational therapy can be useful. In addition, mechanisms such as wheelchairs, as well as environmental modifications, 
can help people diagnosed with SMA maintain their mobility and independence. Spinal muscular atrophy, SMA, is a serious genetic condition that affects approximately 1 in 11,000 births, and about 1 in every 50 Americans is a genetic carrier. In addition, it is the number one genetic cause of death for infants. While these statistics are true, it is important to note that in most cases, and with appropriate treatment, SMA is manageable and only affects one's physical abilities. Thank you for joining us, and thank you, Paul, for helping us out today. This video is brought to you by PATH, Parent to Parent Family Voices of Connecticut. We would like to credit the New England Regional Genetics Network, NERGAN, CureSMA.org, the Muscular Dystrophy Association, MDA, and the SMA News Today for the information shared in this video. If you'd like to stay in the loop, follow PATH, Parent to Parent Family Voices of Connecticut on Facebook, where you'll get updates on future episodes and other programs. Thank you.